Good day to all. Hopefully you can hear me and see the screen I'm sharing. Thank you for joining us again. Welcome to our fourth week of Bexel Manager Online Education. I'm Mila Tapejovic here with you again, BIM Manager at Bexel Consulting. And today I'm teaching you how to manage your BIM projects using Bexel Manager. For questions, use Q&A and I and will respond at the end. If some of you is with us for the first time, this is the seventh online session introducing you Bexel Manager. Uh, and all the sessions will be recorded and sent to you otherwise. Also, at the end of the entire education program, all recorded sessions will be uploaded on YouTube. And the sample model which I'm presenting during these sessions will be also uploaded to our user area. So you can download it and use it for practice. Last week, I explained how to manage cost of your BIM project and uh, how to make your cost estimates using Vexel Manager Cost Editor. And we made a brief introduction into basics of 4D BIM and scheduling options. And you learned how to link your imported schedules and make construction simulations. And it was really, really basic. But today we're going even further and I'll try to explain you how to entirely make feasible and optimize construction schedules in Bexel Manager using our advanced scheduling engine. Uh, uh, one of the benefits of using our platform uh, is for scheduling and instead of using traditional scheduling platforms, which are not BIM based, is that you can use all available information from the BIM models, use that model to accurately create your scheduling zones or phases and optimize your schedules tasks, activities based or on resources and the real quantities from, from the same B model that you're using for scheduling. And our platform can help you to, to organize your schedules, to organize your task levels and relations. And based on these defined rules of activities, our, our engine automatically creates thousands of scheduled tasks which uh, are linked together and which are automatically linked to 3db model elements so without further ado let's dive into this part of bexel manager so again we're gonna continue with the same b model that we used for the previous sessions and progressively i've explained uh, all the parts and all the aspects of bim how you progressively creates and add some additional information, segregate your B models in order to use all this information for the scheduling options. But before that, let me just present you what is the goal for today's sessions. Uh, this is the final B model of these two sample buildings. And today, and hopefully after this session, you'll be able to do the same process and repeat the same methodology to create your own schedule for your own BIM project. So this is what we're going to achieve today. We're going to create a new schedule. Using our predefined creation templates for the scheduling. And we're doing that. The system will automatically create entire schedule with a lot of tasks and relations between these tasks and automatically all these tasks will be related to 3db model elements in order to create 4d simulation but not just nice video of your of your uh, schedule but it's also uh, accurate and uh, feasible and also optimized schedule which you can you use on your real construction projects. So this is the automatically generated schedule. I'm going to pop this window out so you can see what we achieved in just a few clicks, basically. So this is the schedule will, with all these tasks, with the relations between these tasks and automatically we also have the line of balance, which we can organize in a 
different levels of view. And this is done automatically. And also, if we check the schedule animation, this is how the animation looks like. So hopefully, after today's session, you'll be able to do the same process for your own schedules. And of course, if we use the animation, this is the video of the schedule. So hopefully you're, you'll able to see this. So without wasting more time, this is what we're gonna do and how to do it. We're gonna start from scratch. So basically the main goal and main idea of Bexel Manager as a scheduling platform is to create uh, the, or unlike the other scheduling tools, which are, uh, used for different kinds of, uh, um, let's say, scheduling types for scheduling, not just the construction buildings and the construction projects, but scheduling different types of uh, works or work types. Uh, Bexel Manager is actually BIM-based scheduling uh, engine, and it means that it's oriented for construction. And because it's oriented for construction industry. Therefore, the flow line or actually the, 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 the main idea is to create something which will recreate or uh, make your construction schedules and tasks and all your activities as much as uh, possible efficient. And this is the main goal. So we're trying to recreate the same process, which is commonly used in, in uh, uh, car industry, which is a lean process for optimized and uh, efficient using of your resources and to create uh, your activities. And uh, sometimes it's, it's much, much, or always it's much better than, uh, than creating just your, let's say plans for uh, gun, chart, gun chart purposes itself. And we are trying not just to create the gun chart and uh, the list of your activities, but to create uh, efficient and uh, feasible schedule overall. And that's why we believe that also uh, not just uh, the gun chart, which I presented in a previous session is important, of course, but also what is important is line of balance. So when we're talking about the construction industry, we need to have the line of balance or uh, flow line view. Because in the construction industry, all these tasks and the activities are organized in different zones and the levels and phases. And this is uh, something which is different from other industries. And that's why it's really, really important for um, quality and uh, uh, optim, op, optima, optimized uh, schedules that you that you will create. So our system tries to create optimized schedule uh, like an assembly line. And uh, for this kind of scheduling method, we are using the methodologies and the zones. And zones and methodologies are the main, let's say, tools for creating and defining uh, our scheduling methods. So these tools are positioned in the upper part of the window and you can find them here within the tab schedule. You can see the zone editor, which is currently empty and methodology editor, which is also currently empty. And we can create creation templates mixing these two tools and these created zones and methodology in order to create entire schedule. But before that, the 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 start and what we see as a start for creating any kind of schedules and the most importantly beam based schedules is using already available information so previously we explained how you can segregate your b model elements uh, in different selection sets 
also I've explained how the system or Bexel manager automatically segregates all B model elements automatically uh, based on different buildings, based on different uh, elevations or the stories. So we can check and hide and unhide these elements based on specific uh, elevation or the story of the building. This is all automatically done. So if it's done automatically, why, why not use it? So Bexel Manager allows you to use all this information without doing something additionally, which is commonly done in the traditional scheduling uh, platforms, other traditional used sc scheduling platforms. And also what we believe is a start for any, any kind of uh, scheduling process is basically in the cost editor or any type of classification. So for, for, uh, for a basic of your tasks and activities of the schedule, you usually use some kind of uh, classification. And if you're using the same classification, which is usually uh, project-based or uh, even better company-based, company or if you have some kind of classification which is used for entire country, then you can use the same classification and the systems for any type of the projects and always use the same and reuse it. And because of that, uh, the, the uh, workflows and also the order of these sessions are cre creating and presenting you how to create your cost estimation and then creating 4D and 5D simulations because everything in our platform is related. So in order to explain it um, much uh, understandable and much clearer for everyone, I'm gonna do it in few samples or examples. So uh, this is the same building that we used on a previous sessions. And of course we use some of the uh, master format and uniformat classifications. And these are really complex and they uh, contain all, all different types of uh, uh, cost items organized in their own uh, way according to the classification but in this case in order to make it much understandable for you i'm going to create a quite simple cost uh, estimation for just construction part of the building for just the structural uh, parts of the building for concrete elements and then create the schedule for that and after that i'm going to expand it to entire building so i think it's going to be much understandable from, from the scratch. So I'm gonna create new classification system. So this is something that you're typically doing on your uh, project. So you get your B model and then you're creating some kind of classification system for cost estimation. If you have it, if you have already something that you use for all projects, it's even better. You can use it and then automatically create the schedule. But if you don't have it, if you're doing that for the first time, we're gonna create new construction and this is a classification for this part of uh, structural elements and of course for this purpose I'm going to demonstrate to you one new feature of Bexel Manager this is from the latest uh, update I'm going to create new cost classification system using the wizard from the quantity takeoffs so I already have a few quantity takeoffs for the structural elements. And I'm gonna create first one for the uh, tasks or the elements which will be related to reinforcement and uh, doing these types of uh, activities using the QTO for structural reinforcement. And for the codes of these items, I'm gonna use the option mark. You can use any property and this is just for a, for this presentation purposes, you can use it whatever you like from your properties of the elements, but I already have some defined properties and I'm gonna use it to create my cost classifications and cost items automatically from these quantity takeoffs. I have my structural reinforcement. I also have my structural concrete QTOs and I'm using these types of segregation to create my uh, cost 
classification and then cost version. So these are cost items. And if I select applicable elements, then you see the system automatically selects structural foundation reinforcement or the elements which can be related to this. And then again, I'm gonna add additional level of, uh, or additional items for the structural concrete elements. These are for the reinforcement. So I'm gonna use again, quantity takeoff for structural concrete elements using again, mark property as a code and price property for the price, unit price. And of course, in a real projects, you can additionally use any of these uh, cost items and then edit these cost items, adding resources if needed. And then if you uh, fully define your cost items with all resources, then you can use resources to optimize your created schedule. But for this demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna create this few cost items without resources, only with, uh, with, uh, with unit prices, and that's it. And because all these automatically generated with the, with the queries, I can use the option auto assign to new cost version. And these automatically creates cost estimation for the structural parts of the building. So if we go to the assigned items, this is the price of my structural works based on this cost ver or based on this classification and these prices of the cost items. So if I select the elements which are included, so these are elements which are included in these cost items. So basically structural elements of these two buildings. And this is something that you usually do for any types of construction projects. You get your B model and then you're trying to anticipate the price, usually using some kind of classification. If you do that, this is a base for creating the schedule afterwise. So in order to use all these available information, you created cost estimation with a price, with the quantity of these elements. So if I select the elements, you automatically know what is the quantity of these elements and then where these elements are positioned automatically. So why not use all this information? So how to do it? So if you have your cost estimation, then we can use methodologies and zone to create the basics or the structure of our schedule. So how it works, I'm gonna go to the methodology editor and explain you how this works and what this represents actually. So methodology is the window where you're defining the order of your items or the activities of your schedule and relations between these activities. So I'm gonna create new methodology, which will be called uh, in this case, simple. Simple methodology, which will be related to our cost estimation or the cost version, or actually the cost classification of our um, classification that we used for cost estimation. So let me just shrink, shrink it a little bit. So we used this cost classification, which is called new construction to link and calculate the price of these elements. This is the version. This is the cost version. I can rename this one. This is a new cost version based on new construction. And then within the methodologies, we used this cost classification to refer our future activities. 
So when we do this, when, when I create a new methodology, which is related to any cost classification system that we have in the B model, the system automatically creates this methodology, which is related to this. In this part of the window, we can see the relations of these created methodology. It's, it's related to the new construction classification and all these items. So now we can create the list of these activities and the relation between these activities. So like, uh, like as I've said, in the uh, car industry, we can actually use this to um, organize the, 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 the relations and the activities which will be used to create the schedule. So how it works, we can create new items in this case, because we are automatically linking B model elements to our schedule uh, items or activity tasks, we're gonna create new item linked. And then from the list of the items of this cost classifications that we used, new construction, we can choose the cost items which will be used for the defining our tasks and the activities. So we can do it in a several ways. I'm going to use all these cost items and hit OK. So the system use and creates new, let's say, uh, tasks based on these cost items. And automatically, when you click on any of these uh, items on the right part of the screen, you see that it's automatically linked to this uh, constru uh, cost uh, item. And of course, I'm gonna save it. And of course, because we created cost estimation, all these cost items are automatically linked to B model elements. So everything is related. So these cost items are related to B model elements. And of course, your methodology items are automatically linked with the cost items and with the uh, uh, B model elements automatically if you created your cost version. And here we defining relations between these tasks. So of course, like in the car industry, we are trying to reproduce the same, let's say workflow or the um, line of production, uh, capturing, uh, let's say planning logic uh, in order to create uh, the relation of these activities. So it's like a virtual assembly line for construction site. So here you creating the, the list and the workflow order of your uh, activities and the tasks in the schedule. So of course, we first want to create or execute our reinforcement for um, foundations. So we're gonna find foundations. And of course, the first one is foundation reinforcement and then foundation concrete. And then of course, uh, the next one is uh, in this case, because I'm trying to reproduce the planning logic, I'm gonna say that the next one are uh, the beams or actually the beam reinforcement and then beams or actually the concrete beams, concrete pouring for the beams. And of course, the next one is uh, uh, after that, uh, pouring the, uh, or creating reinforcement and concrete uh, pouring for uh, the slabs. So we're gonna do this. And practically we are telling the system how these tasks will be related. Of course, any kind, any, link any type of, or actually any arrow, any types of uh, relations that you currently create between these two tasks can be adjusted additionally. And this is something that I'm gonna explain later on. So in the right part of the screen, when you click on this arrow, you see the type. So this one is a finish to start. So after completing the reinforcement, we're gonna start uh, pouring concrete and then reinforcement for 
the beams and then uh, pouring concrete and so on. And all these types can be changed. So you have different types, start, 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 finish. And based on type, automatically system change the color. So you can visually differentiate these types of relation. And of course, for any type, you can specify the lag between these two activities. And we also have additional options, which I'm going to explain a little bit later. So practically, we creating the relations and the order of activities. So of course, after the completion of the slabs, we can uh, execute the walls and uh, let's say the columns at the same time. So we're going to create this kind of relation. And that's it. We can click the auto arrange. So the system rearrange these activities. So practically we created the relations. It's a workflow of these activities. And you know, in order to make these uh, tasks, which will be generated in the schedule, um, let's say more organized and understandable, I'm, I'm just going to rename these cost items into something that is uh, much uh, understandable for me. So instead of using this automatically generated name based on the cost item name, I can use the option change this into manual and then rename these into, for example, foundation reinforcement. And then this is uh, structural foundations, concrete pouring, and so on. I'm just going to quickly try to rename these, but I think you can catch what is the, the process. First, you link your um, cost items to your tasks. And then you create your relations between these tasks. And then you can use these options to rename these tasks if, if you find it more understandable for the project. So if this is OK, I'm going to quickly complete this. And then we can skip to the next step. So practically, we used and create all the tasks which will be used for uh, the structural concrete elements. So it's quite simple. And it's almost uh, uh, the same for any different type of the construction pro project with a, with a few adjustments. But basically, this is a flow line for the construction. So you're always creating first foundations and then and the beams or the slabs and then the uh, walls and the uh, columns. And depending on the uh, type of your uh, BIM uh, project, then you, you can have some additional, let's say, steel elements or uh, some uh, different types of uh, foundations or different types of uh, uh, walls and so on. But this is the way where you're specifying relations and the order of these activities within the methodology. And if it's if it's OK, I'm going to save this simple methodology. And of course, we just created the tasks. But we didn't say how these tasks will be executed based on uh, the, actual, uh, the actual physical uh, position on your project. So that's why we can use this uh, automatically segregation, automatically created segregation based on the levels and based on the, let's say, buildings. And of course, if your project have specific phases or the zones, then you can create specific selection sets based on the properties within the uh, elements of your B model. And then you can organize all your B model elements into the phases. So these are phase one, two, and three. These are groups of the elements. And then we can use this segregation groups to tell the systems that these groups are actually zones for the methodology. And I'm going to do this in order to uh, make it understandable for everyone, just for the levels, for the first example. So I'm going to go to the zone editor, 
and here we defining the zones for the building. So the first one will be levels. Of course, all tasks, all activities will be executed based on the stories of your building. So that's why I'm going to create a new zone, which will be called levels. And then I'm going to relate these levels to my building stories. And of course, we have two buildings. And I'm going to show you how we can manage this. For the start, I'm going to link these just for the building one. And automatically, because these are system-based segregation based on the elevation, we can use this additional help, which says create relations. And then the system automatically tries to create relations between these, between these uh, levels. Because every time when you're creating your schedule, uh, you usually start from the lowest story and then going up to the top. And this is what system done automatically. And if we're satisfied with this, that's it. These two simple, let's say, uh, levels of hierarchy of our future schedule are enough to create the first schedule. So we created methodology, we created zone, and then we're gonna create new schedule. This one will be called simple. And of course, because we are creating the schedule based on the cost estimation and the cost classification here within the creating the schedule, we want to relate the schedule to the same cost version that we used for creating the methodology. We're gonna create or actually link it to new cost version. So of course, when we did that, the system automatically creates new schedule only one task, basically this is the name of the schedule, and the price, which is the same price as within the cost estimation. And of course, if we want to tell the system when our schedule is going to start, we can do that within the settings, and we can specify the starting date for the schedule. So I'm going to make it, for example, April or let's say May uh, today or tomorrow actually, and we can specify how this schedule will be created initially. So default, by default, we creating the activities with the same durations. And this is something that uh, we also want to point out. We are not trying to automatically create, and this is uh, uh, impass impossible basically, to create automatically schedule which, uh, will, dif which will have different uh, duration of different tasks based on resources and uh, and uh, quantities of your elements because it's not uh, logical because on a different types of your construction uh, sites you will have a different types of available resources so instead of doing that uh, type of uh, uh, impossible calculation we are trying to to tell the system to use specific pace for each task and then based on the pace, you can adjust your uh, resources on entire process, in, in entire project. This is more important. And here we're gonna specify that default pace, which is 40 working hours or practically five uh, working days. And of course, by default, I'm gonna set the, the default constraint priority as soon as possible. So if this is okay, I'm gonna hit okay. And automatically the schedule starts at this predefined date, 6th of May. And uh, I'm gonna create my schedule, initial schedule using methodology and the zones. So how we do it? I'm gonna right click on our schedule and use the option new task creation wizard. So for the most optimal and the best workflow using the Bexel manager for creating schedule, we usually use in creation wizard. And this allows you to mix your methodology and zones in order to create the levels of hierarchy of your schedule. So right now I'm gonna create new, uh, let's say order or um, 
uh, hierarchy levels of the schedule, which will be used to create tasks of the schedule. So for the first level of creation, I'm going to use methodology items. And this is the one which we created. And then I'm going to use the zones. So I'm going to select zone items and select my levels. So it means that the Bexel manager will create entire schedule based on the, uh, these tasks, which will be automatically segregated on different stories according to the relation specified in the zones. So if I hit OK, the system automatically creates schedule with the tasks. These are cost items used to create uh, tasks. And then all these tasks are segregated into uh, levels of the building. And of course, you see these relations created. And this is really simple. And I'm going to show you how this uh, schedule looks like and which are the flows, current flows of this kind of uh, schedule. So I'm going to go to the schedule animation. And in order to see all these elements and our schedule, we have to make sure that all the elements are visible and switch to schedule view. So I'm going to update the schedule and that's it. So if I play the schedule, I'm going to zoom it a little bit closer. So you see the tasks, the activities currently executing, you see the price and the date. These um, legends can be adjusted right here, but I'm not, I'm not going to waste more time to, to explain this. Currently, you can use the uh, online tutorial tutorials or a manual to check and uh, uh, get, get to know with all these options. So I'm going to just hit play to see what are current flows. So you see, we created the schedule, but the relations are first execute the foundation, then execute the beams, then execute the columns and the uh, walls, or actually execute the slabs, of course, and then columns and uh, walls. So the system does that. And of course, segregates these based on the uh, stories. So it's not it's not good one. It's not a uh, uh, nice schedule. So we obviously made some um, actually uh, flow, or we didn't define everything fully. So let's go to the uh, methodology editor once again, and I'm going to explain you what is the difference. What we didn't uh, created as we planned to. So here we created the relations between these two tasks or all these tasks, but we didn't actually create relation which says after the completion of, uh, let's say, uh, beams on the base level, create the next uh, tasks on the next level. So we didn't create that. So in order to copy all these relations to the next levels of uh, uh, the segregation of the schedule, which are in this current uh, example are levels, I'm going to select all these relations. Or before that, I can duplicate my methodology with relations with So I'm copying my methodology. Not, I'm not going to edit this one. So that's why I'm duplicating this. And I'm going to edit duplicate. So we're going to select all these uh, relations using the option select relation. And then within the type, I'm going to copy these relations to the children. So it means that the system will copy these relations to the next levels of segregation of our scheduled hierarchy. And of course, when we change or when we copied these 
to the next levels, the system changed the representation of these arrows. So it looks like a dashed arrow. And then if I save this, I can create new schedule using this kind of methodology. But instead of just doing that, I'm going to create additional zone of segregation. So here we want to segregate all these elements, not according to the uh, levels, but also according to the phases. So we're just going to segregate the schedule even further. And of course, before I continue, let me just show you in this schedule, you see we just uh, presenting only one building. And that's because within the zone editor, when we defined our levels, we just refer the uh, linking of these tasks to the building one. So we can resolve this issue. So we can select all these uh, tasks and add additional reference to the B model elements. So right here, I'm going to include the sub level of the building two. For this one, I'm going to include the uh, entry level for the building two. For this one, second floor of the second building. And we're going to do this for all levels of the building in order to see all construction elements from both buildings. And of course, system automatically creates the name. I'm going to fastly rename this. Sub So this is important because the system automatically creates your schedule based on these names. So it's much understandable for everyone who going to use the schedule to rename it uh, according to some logical names. And that's it. So if I save this, I can, before creating new schedule, I can update this one. And then the system uh, tells you that is going to create new links with the additionally added uh, zones of the schedule. So if I hit update and go to see my updated animation, you see now we, we are seeing the both buildings or elements for the both buildings. But again, the methodology is the same. First, executing foundations, then the beams, then the slabs, then the columns and the walls. So that's why we created or adjusted methodology by creating or copying these relations to the children. And then I'm going to add additional uh, level of hierarchy of my schedule, which will be phases. So instead of just using the levels, I'm going to use selection sets for the phases. So practically, these are phase one, two, and three. And then if we segregate this even further, and this is something that Bexel Manager Scheduling Engine will do automatically, we'll be able to see only these small part of the building, which is practically the lowest level of the schedule, just one phase on one building story for specific activities. So I'm going to go back to the zones and define my phases. So I'm going to define phases using link rules. And instead of using building stories or building levels, I'm going to use selection sets. So I'm going to select these selection sets. And also, based on the name, the system can create relations automatically. And then we can adjust these relations if we are not satisfied with this. And that's it. Again, you can specify the types of relations, specify the lag, and so on, according to your uh, process or according to your planning um, logic. So I'm going to save this zone. 
and then we're gonna create new schedule. So this one will be called simple2. Again, it's gonna be related to the same cost version. So when we create new schedule, again, we can specify the starting date. And we're gonna create new schedule using newly created methodologies and zones. So again, we can use creation wizard. And because we still don't have a lot of zones or methodologies, we can create new uh, levels of hierarchy of our schedule, or we can use the template. I'm gonna explain it uh, next, uh, in the next uh, example. So for now, I'm gonna use again, methodology, the previously created, methodology with copied relations. And then I'm gonna segregate these tasks according to the created zones. First, according to the levels, and then according to the, uh, then according to the uh, phases. And I can hit okay. So now the system will create the schedule with the first level of, hi of hierarchy based on the tasks. And then these will be segregated based on the levels. And then additionally, these will be segregated based on the phases. So when we hit OK, the system creates new schedule. And now you see all these segregated according to the levels and then according to the phases. And what is really important is that the system does this automatically. So if, for example, you don't have specific cost items or B model elements on, on specific story, the system is smart enough to create and uh, relink these uh, activities to the next activity, which is uh, in the specified order. So for example, if we don't have uh, columns on the next uh, level, then the Bexel manager will automatically link the slabs to the, let's say walls or to the uh, next level of uh, um, elements of your, of your building. And now when we check, for example, line of balance, because we already have a little bit more uh, zones of segregation, you already see these activities. When you click on each of these activities, you can see the information about these activities and duration. And it's all already looks a little bit better. And of course, when these activities in the, in the flow line are presented as dashed line, it means that we have a several activities uh, overlapped, for example. And in this case, we have a structural uh, columns reinforcement and structural walls reinforcement at the same time on the same phase of the same, of the same entry level. And this is something that we, uh, specified in our methodology, because we said uh, at the same time, execute the uh, columns and the walls. So I'm going to pop in and go to schedule animation to see currently created simulation. Again, I have to show all the elements and then hit play. So now you see the elements are executed based on the phases. So this is the phase one, this is the phase two, this is the phase three, and then slabs. And then it's already much better, but again, we see a little flow because our beams are still executing before the columns. So what's the issue? There are several ways how to resolve this. And it depends on the way how you created your beam model. So in this case, we created the beams which are at the entry level, and we also have the columns at the entry level. So basically the system does as we specified, it creates the beams and the slabs on the entry level and then the columns. But it's not something that we want to, to do it. 
because we believe that first these columns and the wall supposed to be executed and then these columns even though these are the col uh, these beams even though these beams are the for the first the second floor and these columns are for the entry level so that's why i'm gonna go again to my methodology and repair this and after this we're gonna get the uh the feasible and good schedule so i'm gonna go back to the methodology and again i'm gonna duplicate this methodology and call it constructive so what we are gonna do now we see that there's an issue with presenting or ex actually executing the uh, structural columns and the beams so what we are going to do we're going to create relations which will say we want to execute the columns of the previous level of segregation in this case uh, levels of the store or the stories of the buildings before the beams or reinforcement of the beams on the next uh, level so now i'm going to create this kind of relation and because it looks like a, i don't know some kind of circular relation it's not because the system automatically when you try to do this automatically check this type of relation as constructive and of course by default constructive offset is one i'm going to explain a little bit later what this means but it means basically that these columns has to be executed on the one level before then the beams on the next level starts if we specified uh, constructive offset 2 it means that the construction columns supposed to be executed and then the beams on the on the second story supposed to be start so this is what uh, the uh, constructive offset means and uh, i think it's going to be much clearer when we execute this uh methodology once again so i'm gonna save this we just created this simple type and this is really unique type of relation that uh, we created because we see we saw that uh, it's uh, it's usually supposed to be done in this way for constructive elements basically for all structural elements you want to specify this kind of relation and then if we save this methodology we can execute the same uh, or we can create new schedule executing this new methodology or we can create additional levels and before that this is really important when i specify the uh, methodology and specify this new way of uh, relation and this is the constructive one we have to specify which is related to this constructive uh, type of relation so we speci we have to tell the system that it refers to the levels of our building so now i'm going to go to my zones and select my levels and tell the system that levels are actually constructive uh, level of hierarchy which will be used to segregate the elements uh, and the tasks according to that and of course if we want to segregate even further our schedule we can use i'm going to save this and i'm going to create new uh, level of segregation of our schedule based on the buildings so in a previous schedule you saw that uh, both buildings are executed at the same time so here we're gonna create new levels of segregation and i'm going to specify that for these types of segregation we're going to use buildings and automatically we can create a relation and this means that the first building will or actually the start the second building will start when the first building is completed but we don't want that kind of uh, schedule we want to say in this case that these two building will start at the same time but for example with specific lag and i'm going to specify 200 or actually 
for uh, 160 working hours, which means approximately four months after the uh, this building starts. And I'm gonna save this. So now, instead of creating new schedule, and we're gonna call this one simple three, again, it's related to the same cost version. Instead of using and creating the uh, same method of creation using the creation wizard, I'm gonna use creation template because we have a lot of zones now. So I'm gonna create new creation template. And this is where we're specifying the uh, segregation levels of, or segregation hierarchy of the schedule. So again, we're gonna use methodology, methodology items, and then we're gonna use this last one methodology with constructive relations. Then again, we're gonna segregate this according to the zones. First, in this case, we want to segregate everything according, again, based on the levels, and then according to the uh, phases. And we added new zone items, which are buildings. So in this case, we want to move or shift the buildings as the first level of segregation. So we're gonna have the schedule based on the uh, building one and two, and then all these tasks will be segregated further according to the methodology. So this one, this template will be called the te simple template. and hit OK. So now, whenever we're creating new schedule, we can use the template. So we don't have to create new rules, we can use the template. And then the system will automatically create new schedule. I'm gonna pop this one out so you can see how it looks like. We didn't specify the start date. So it started at this, at this point, I can change this. So it starts a specified de uh, date. And then if we expand it, the first levels of segregation is uh, the tasks and then levels and then phases. And again, you see additional relations. So now we can check our beams and the, uh, let's say, let's say uh, structural columns. So you see relations. And here you see the columns are executed before the uh, beams on the, on, the, on the second level. So if I update, we're actually just gonna pop this in and go back to my schedule animation, update, and then play this one, you'll be able to see the schedule that we created. And this one is actually a good one. So, here we executing building one and then with specified leg, the building two based on the zones and based on the levels. And this is how the, you see this one is looks accurate and it's not just accurate, it's feasible and it's efficient. So if I go back to schedule editor and go to the line of balance, you can see how this line of balance looks li like now. So it's almost perfect for, but these are just the structural elements. So I think this is really, really clear. And now you can understand how the system actually works, how the scheduling engine works. And now we're going to the next, step or the next level. So if you have uh, the, the large number of your uh, activities, and this is what is usually done. So you usually have your uh, architecture and MEP tasks, and you have the cost estimation based on, let's say, Uniformat or any other classification system with the, with the, with the hundreds of uh, the, the cost items, 
you can use this to create your methodology. And then if you do this, I'm gonna skip to my previously presented sample at the start. So this is the sample from the start. This is a fully defined uh, BIM project with a methodology which is based on uniform at cost classification. So if we go to check the reference is used, is referenced to the uniformat, and then all these tasks are referenced to the uniformat cost, cost items. And we have a large number of these items and relations between these. And then once you specify this, if you, for example, using the same uh, classification system for the next projects, you can reuse it. So I'm gonna show you how to reuse it. I'm gonna export this. In order to use it for, I'm gonna export selection sets, for example, methodologies, zones, creation templates, and cost classifications in order to use it in the similar project. Or in this case, I'm gonna use it for the same project because in this, in this case, we don't have that much time to present you how to create entire methodology with and link them with, with all these cost items. I'm gonna reuse it. So I'm gonna import all these or actually export for the first time all these from my completed project and reuse it in this sample. So I'm gonna import this, exporting this uh, exchange of the information, which included schedule uh, methodologies, uh, uh, zone items, uh, cost estimate, uh, cost uh, classifications and selection sets only because we had zones. That's why we included selection sets. We could use it without that. So when it's completed, I can go back to my sample model, which have only these three methodologies for uh, structural concrete elements. And then we can exchange the information from this previously exported. So I'm gonna go to exchange import use this and once it's imported because it's the same building we can specify the sources and these are the same sources for the building and hit ok use selection sets methodology zones creation templates and cost classification so now when we do this The system imports everything. We have our uniformat updated with all queries and we can do auto assign to new cost version. System applies this. And once, <clears throat> once it's applied, we're gonna get the cost estimation. Sorry, I forgot to use the uniformat. So let me just use uniformat updated because our methodology is actually created based on, based on uniformat codes. We could use the master format but in that case you have to uh, specify master format as cost classification so i'm going to do auto assign cost items to new cost version again so the system links elements and uh, cost items so once it's completed i can go to my 
assigned items. It's assigned right now. I can edit the name. New uniformat cost version. You see the price. And then we can go back to the methodology, which is fully defined based on the same uniformat classification. We see all relations and we also see the same construction methodology or construction constructive type is used for the for the columns and the walls and also in this specific um, example we had additional um, constructive type which is related to our uh, facade so let me just find this so we have our curtain panels And we had, uh, let me just find it, curtain walls framing, and we have constructive relation, which says minus two. So it means when the beams are completed on the second story, then the curtain walls can start. So this means when you provide the constructive with a negative offset. And now I'm gonna create a new schedule with imported methodologies. So I'm gonna go to my new schedule. And here we're gonna use new uniformat cost, which we assigned in a few minutes ago. And again, the schedule will be created and we can specify the starting date. If we go to the Gantt chart, we can specify the starting date. And then we're gonna apply new template, which will be this one, which we uh, imported with the very advanced methodology. And if we hit OK, the system will automatically create uh, hundreds or the, the, the thousands of uh, tasks depending on the size of your building. So right here you see the uh, timeline of your Gantt. If we expand all these, you see uh, hundreds of tasks with all relations, and this is the main benefit. So the system automatically creates all these tasks with all relations. In other scheduling tools, which are not related to BIM, you had to do it manually for each task. Here the system do it and finds the optimum and uh, most uh, efficient way to do it based on your methodology. And then if we go to the line of balance, we can check the line of balance. And of course we can do some adjustments and I'm gonna do that as well. But before that, let me just present you how the schedule looks like now or how the 4D simulation looks like now. And of course, uh, you see some uh, site preparation works. So we can easily go because these are actually excavation I can go to my gun chart, select these two elements, find these in the task, and then edit the way how these are gonna be presented. So within the settings, I can change this to demolition. So instead of presenting, these are gonna be uh, demolished or actually these are gonna disappear. And also I'm gonna pop out once again, all these schedules are automatically, or all these tasks are automatically related with the B models because you used uh, relation links. And then if I go to my task editor, we can see all information about this task. We can see the time, but we can also see relations between other activities, 
the rules which are used to create this schedule and then we can see the cost and these costs are take or took from the from the elements which are related to this task so you see the cost you see the quantities and the resources so you can see how many resources are necessary to execute these activities or uh, these tasks and then we see the activities of course and then similarly as uh, in the other scheduling tools you see the properties which can be presented as specific columns in the gantt view so if i hit ok i can present you additional columns for example uh, i can add column for for the days duration in days or the columns for example late start or let's say a late finish so you can see all these columns all these information are automatically available and if we pop this in and update the schedule once more this is how the schedule looks like now so let's start from the start so these are executed and then everything according to the methodologies and the zones and then you'll be able to see all these now you see the facade starts when the second level of construction is completed and of course we can easily adjust resources because all these information are available so right here i can select and use the option to level my resources so if i select my building one and check my task report we can see the cost we can see the labor and the equipment so we see some peaks of labor and equipment and we can easily repair this so using the option leveling leveling resources we can tell the system to uh, optimize uh, duration of uh, these specific tasks based on available resources so if we know for example that for the building one we only have a let's say let's see again for these resources so these are glazers and there's a and there's a lot of glazers peaks in specific period and also for pile drives and carpenters as well we can specify to organize or actually level resources so i'm going to use the option level selected the resources for selected part of the schedule so for the building one we can select resources which we want to optimize from the list of resources and i'm going to choose my carpenters glazers and pile drivers hit ok and say that for example uh, the maximum available number of resources are 12 for carpenters and let's say 12 for glazers and only two pile drivers and machines and then i can hit ok analyze this and then apply so the system will automatically change duration of these tasks so you see that the date is changed and then if we go to task report the resource are according to specified maximum allocation and again we can do the same thing for the for the second building and then the perfect we can almost instantly do the perfect uh resource leveling in just a few clicks so again this is the 12 per building okay analyze 
and apply. So now the system is up, the schedule is actually optimized. If we go to the line of balance, pop it out, you see a little bit changed because the resource allocation. And then if I play the schedule, you'll be able to see the new schedule, how it looks like, or new 4D simulation. So basically, this is how the system works. And uh, one of the most important thing uh, is that everything is uh, integrated. So once you create your cost classification and create your cost estimation, so if you have your cost classification with a, with a specified resources, the system will create, or you can define your methodologies based on classifications and cost items. And then the system will automatically create entire schedule with the hundreds of uh, tasks and the uh, relations between these tasks. And everything will be related with the resources based on available quantities and resources extracted from the B model. And this is the main benefit. And that's why uh, you're supposed to, and uh, it's the best ways to use BIM scheduling, BIM-based scheduling engine, such as Bexel Manager to create this kind of a schedule. So now you have entire schedule and you can easily change and adjust your activities according to your needs or according to specific project. And uh, one of the, the, the best uh, benefits, of, of course, is use of the available cost classifications and methodologies for the different projects. And let me just briefly show you this for how you can use this for a totally new project if you you're a, a large construction company or if you're a large um, uh, subcontractor and you're always using the same classification and you always have the same BIM uh, execution plans and your uh, subcontractor actually develops the BIM models at the, in the same way with the same properties added to these elements, then you can use all these information to the next project. So let me just explain you this. You remember that we exported the methodologies and the uniformat classification uh, in order to import it in this sample building because it was really, really time consuming to reproduce this kind of creating methodology and relations between these tasks uh, in this short period of time. So I'm just imported it. And of course, because these are related to uniformat, that's why you have all resources because all these cost items are actually created. If I go to my cost item, any of cost item, items, you see that all cost items are actually created using resources. That's why we had all these information in the schedule, all these resource uh, information. So if you have this kind of classification and you're always using the same methodology to create your building, I'm going to open new project. And this is the new project, which is created from the IFC files. So let me just show you this. This is a new project. This is a new building, high rise building. We have a lot of sources. We have three IFC sources, but these are segregated in the same way. So we always have the, that's why we can use the same methodology and, uh, and um, zones because the entire project is used or created using the same type of uh, B model segregation. So we have structural B model, mechanical and architectural. And these are from the IFC files. So you see the properties are related to the IFC properties as well. And here we don't have anything. We don't have the cost. We don't have any cost uh, estimation. We don't have any uh, zones. 
no methodology, nothing is created, but entire project is created using the same BIM execution plan. So we can use the segregation and the methodologies and the zones from the previous project. And also something which is really, uh, let's say, uh, common error when it comes to the IFC files or exporting the files from the uh, Revit into IFC is that the segregation of these elements according to the levels of the building is, is not uh, always perfect because I know that uh, facade as a curtain wall is always related to the base level. So now I'm going to use the option which Bexel Manager has to auto distribute these elements which are not properly distributed according to the levels because we need this kind of segregation because we're using it to the schedule. So I'm going to use the option auto distribute. That's it. So the system reorganize distribution of the elements. And then we have the elements segregated accurately. And then I'm going to import the entire exchange of the information. So I'm going to use the same exchange methodologies. And right here, we can specify the sources because these previous had two buildings, but our B model actually has only one building. We can match it to just sources according to the name. And that's it. So we can import the zones, methodologies, templates, and cost classification. Hit OK. So once it's completed, now you are able to see the entire methodology is created is the same one that we used for the previous sample with all these types and relations of the of the activities we also have the zones and this is something that we have to correct and this is the only thing with which we have to do so in this previous project, we only had the building which have three levels and the roofs. And in this current project, we have a lot of building stories. So now instead of using these levels from the previous project, I can delete this and import or actually create new linked zones for the levels based on the current stories. And I can also create relations automatically. System does that. And then we can change the names if it's needed. But for this uh, short presentation, I'm going to leave it as it is. Save. And because our creation template is created using the same zones and methodologies based on the buildings, methodology, building levels, and construction sequences, we can use it to create new schedule. But before that, we have to tell the system that all these elements from the building are related to our uniformat classification, which is used to create methodology. So again, I'm just going to use the option auto assign cost version for entire project. Once it's completed, I can go to assigned items, check what's the price, and see what the, what the elements are actually included. So everything is linked. We see the price for entire project. We can check it here with the assigned, unassigned elements. Everything is green, which means everything is assigned. We can select the elements just to make sure that everything is assigned. So these are substructure. These are, for example, shell. So everything works as we planned. And then we can easily create entire schedule just with one click, create new schedule. Hi. 
high rise schedule using the auto sign currently we created auto sign hit okay this is a cost version which we used and then the system creates new schedule so we're going to create so this is the name of the schedule we can specify when the schedule is going to start and we're going to execute the entire schedule using the predefined creation template which we imported and then the system will create entire schedule for 17 building story high-rise office building So basically we open the project and just within a few minutes, we can have entire cost estimation and schedule, which is not just any kind of the schedule. This is really optimized schedule. I'm gonna show you the line of balance as well. This is the created schedule. with uh, with uh, hundreds of tasks so if i expand everything you see how long the schedule is and all relations are automatically created and all task has its own resources and the price because it's related to cost estimation quantities of course and within the line of balance, this is how the schedule looks like. I'm gonna pop it in just to briefly show you the schedule or for the simulation, hit play within the schedule view. Of course, we have to update it and then play. So I'm gonna just go a little bit closer and that's it so this is the main benefit or actually there is no other traditional scheduling tool can do this kind of uh, um, schedule and create automatically the uh, tasks and the relations between the tasks and also uh, relations between B model ele elements according to it. And of course, we can additionally adjust this entire schedule by selecting all these tasks. I can select all my leaf tasks from the schedule using the option select leaf tasks. And then using the option, using the option uh to set all these re, uh, constraints as late as possible all the activities all the tasks will be pushed a little bit further in order to be on the on the critical path so if i apply this you see everything is on a critical path and automatically line of balance is adjusted so this is almost perfect schedule almost the most efficient way of constructing your schedule and of course if we see updated schedule animation this is the way how it looks like and of course we can create the animation so we can orbit a camera around the building itself so right here we're going to create new keyframe and then right here it's going to be So while I'm playing this, let me just check if you have some questions. It took a little bit more time, but hopefully it's much understandable now. I, I try to explain how the system uh, actually works in a, in a, in a really uh, simple example, and then trying to reproduce the same thing in more advanced uh, samples. 
because uh, otherwise I think it's not really uh, understandable how the system works and how complex it is and how you can use all these information from the existing B model in order to create automatically all the tasks and the activities without using and doing, doing something manually. So let me just check your questions. And of course, if you have some additional questions, I'll, I'll try to respond to that as well. Uh, I saw that my my friends are actually responded to most of your questions. Let me just check if something there I can show you. Uh, what about elements that must be planned not by level like facade or curtain walls that you mount by facade, not by level? Of course, you can do that as well. So you can specify this as specific zones, which are not will be related to your uh, to your levels. And of course, I just presented the the best workflow, which actually creates the best schedule, or let's say the most efficient schedule. But of course, there is a lot of work around and uh, different ways how you can create your schedules. So you can create different types of the schedules without even need to create uh, without even need to use all these, uh, let's say, uh, zones or methodologies, you can use the option to create the schedule partially using creation rules and selecting specific methodologies and zones one by one, and then assigning uh, additional levels of segregation additionally. Let me just present you, it's not the perfect way, but just for uh, presentation purposes, I'm going to create new link rule reference on the, let's say, uh, methodology of my office building. Hit OK. And then the system creates a lot of tasks, but then we can select for the, for example, facade, uh, curtain walls, and curtain wall panels not to segregate additionally to uh, the levels but for example based on the phases so we can create new reference children based relations and use zone items not by the levels but based on the phases and that's it so the system creates these automatical relations and the tasks and these are not related to the levels and then we can add the levels for all these activities. But this is something that takes uh, more, more time and more, uh, let's say, expertise to adjust the relations and the, uh, the, uh, the uh, durations for all these tasks if you do it this way. Uh, the best workflow is to create your methodology and template and then uh, use the methodology and the, the zones for entire entire project. Is there an option to define which side left or right first will start? Yes, I forgot to, to mention that in the previous session and also for each of these tasks, when once they created, or even for the parent task, you can go to the task edit and then within the settings here, in this window, you can specify how these elements will be presented in the animation. So by default, it's done automatically, but here we can change and we can specify the element ordering from left to right, from center to the, to the side, which are the primary direction and so on. And this is something for the more advanced visual representation of the schedule. So you can play with these settings additionally for each task. Can you define manpower production rate? Yes, of course, uh, you can specify uh, within the task editor, you can specify and do the resource allocation for each task. So this is what's, what is available. And if you actually uh, change duration or change the 
resource allocation for this selected task, you can change this and provide the available allocation. Uh, will we see look ahead plans export? Uh, yes, I can. Um, I'm going to present that uh, tomorrow because tomorrow we uh, explaining how you can create um, progress entries, progress report, and how you can actually compare planned and actual schedules. Uh, of course, we can create different types of uh, look ahead plans. One of the look ahead plans or ways how you can do it if we go to the schedule current schedule and go to the schedule animation we can change the option how this animation will be pre will be presented and instead of daily we can change this to weekly or monthly and hitting okay the elements which are presented are on a monthly base so these are the elements at the end of each month. And then we can easily select the elements for specific period of time and then provide that kind of uh, selection sets. Or uh, now maybe I can show you uh, additional, let's say add-in or the use of our API, which can be used to create and assign cost and schedule um, information to your B model elements. So if you have your schedule, and of course this one is related to cost estimation, uh, let me do it on, on this smaller building because it's gonna take some time on this uh, high, high rise building. I'm gonna go back to this sample building, save this one. save before we uh, apply this uh, script. And then I'm going to show you uh, how you can use the API in order to assign specific properties related to the cost and uh, um, uh, time when this specific element is supposed to be executed. So now I'm going to use the API console and use some script that we already have developed and some of these scripts will be also published to our user area so you, you you'll be able to download it i'm going to load the script this is the one and i'm going to apply this so this is the script which, which actually uh, creates new property and write down the value to each element when these elements supposed to be uh, when is start and start date and finish date for execution of that element and what's the price of that specific element. So if I execute this script using the option execute, the system will create new properties, and I'm going to show you these properties which will can which can be used to. Uh, some kind of look ahead plans as well. So if I select any of these elements and go to the properties, you see the new group of the properties, which is called schedule is created. And then we see the finish date for selected element, start date and the total cost for these selected elements. If I change the elements I'm currently selecting, we see the finish and the start date. And it works for all the elements. And then you can export these properties and you can export even IFC files, which includes not just uh, the properties, but it also includes the schedule and quantity takeoff information. And this is really something unique for the Bexel manager because if you export IFC4 uh, files, 
in checking export schedules and quantity takeoffs, it means that you can import this IFC file for, and then all these information related to the cost and estimation can be uh, also loaded in your project. So hopefully um, I, I finished for today's session. It really took some time, but hopefully uh, I, I hope that actually I explained it in an understandable way and then you can try to do it yourself in your projects. And also I have to repeat once again, I'm going to uh, share these sample models after the completion of these sessions. So uh, I think next Wednesday or, or next Thursday, all these B models uh, will be uh, uploaded on our user area. So you can download them and practice on them. Thank you very much. If you don't have any more questions, thank you and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.